the owner and creator here at Soy and Shea and thank you so much for joining me for another soap making video. In today's soap I'm going to be addressing some common comments that got left behind in a mica unboxing video that I did. The two most common comments that actually got left in there quite a number of times is that people were unsure how to use micas in their soap or how to actually add them into the soap batter. And the other really common one that came up was that people were on budgets or just starting out soap making and they didn't know which micas to buy to add into their range to start with. So I thought I would show you how I'm going to create a rainbow soap using just three pots of mica. Let's go. The first thing we're going to have a look at is colours for mica. One of the most common things that popped up in uh, in the video was you didn't know which colours to buy. Now, if you are able to, I would probably actually suggest buying yourself at least six colours and buying one of each colour of the rainbow. So you'll have you know, your yellow, red, orange, blue, green and a purple. Don't bother getting two purples, just the one purple. From there you can actually create lighter shades of that colour and um, if you actually got yourself some black or if you've got activated charcoal you can also create darker shades. So from those six colours all of a sudden you've actually got the potential to make 18 colours through different shades. If you're not able to get that many, I would suggest buying one each of the primary colours, so yellow, blue and red. And from this you should be able to mix all the other colours that you are looking for. So what I'm going to start off by doing, I have actually got some Wellington Mica. I've got this one because it's a nice bright yellow. I'm going to start with a teaspoon of Mica in there. Just gave that a quick clean and I'm going to move on to this blue which is cobalt blue. Again another really nice bright blue colour and I'm putting a teaspoon in that one. And then into my final pot, we'll give that another wipe down, I am going to put a teaspoon of really red which I have got from Nurture Soap. I'll give that a good tap off. I'm going to go and clean my spoon. Now the other really common thing that was actually noted in there was that people were unsure about how to add micas into their soap. And there are a few different ways. One of the ways is you can put your mica straight into your soap batter as the powder and mix it in. Or you can do as I'm going to do today and mix it up with some oil. Now the reason I like to mix it up with some oil is so that there is less mixing time. This is actually going to mix into your soap a lot um, better, a lot easier if it's actually being predispersed in some oil and micas are oil soluble so there's no use trying to mix your micas in water because it's just not going to work. What I've done to start with is I have added two teaspoons of oil into each of those pots and now what I'm going to do is give them a stir and I'll see if I need a little bit more oil to add into these. In fact, I think I will add another one into each of these because I actually want a fair bit of colorant. So we'll put another teaspoon. So it's a total of three teaspoons in here. I don't really believe there is any right or wrong way of um, or amount of adding oil in with your micas. Just be aware that if you are adding oil in that's not from out of your soap batter mix, you are essentially adding to the super fat because you are adding extra oil into your soap. So it's not a bad thing, just remember don't go too overboard otherwise you're going to really increase that super fat level. So we'll give these a really good mix up and then we'll move on to the next bit. Alright, so let's get on to actually making the rest of this soap now. So I've got my oils in here which have come down to room temperature. I am going to pour my sodium hydroxide and distilled water solution in down my stick blender just to stop any splashback. We'll mix it up and then we'll split it out and start doing some of those colours. Alright, so I have quite literally just pulsed that to bring it together because I want to have that bit of working time to show you. I'm going to add in my fragrance now and I am using Viva La Juicy. I've heard so much about this fragrance and I decided I was going to get it in to give it a go. It's got notes of wild berries, mandarin, gardenia, jasmine, honeysuckle, vanilla, 
sandalwood and a bit of amber. Now we'll be honest, the first time I actually smelt this I was quite surprised. I was expecting it to be really, really juicy. I hadn't realised it was a perfume um, dupe. So it made sense that this was more of a floral as opposed to a, a really fruity fragrance. But it is actually quite nice. So I'm going to give this a blend. I can see we've got a bit of ricing. All right, those couple of little pulses there got rid of that um, ricing that was starting to happen. And what I'm now going to do is I have got some jugs here and I'm going to split it out for six colours. So I've got those five and there's my six. All right, so we're just going to put the big one aside for one moment and I'm going to grab three of these. I am going to start by adding a bit of yellow, about half of what I've got in there, maybe just a bit over, about two thirds I reckon of yellow into that one. I'm going to add about two thirds of that red in there and then I'm going to add some blue into this one. And let's give them a stir and I'm using my new spatula from Tierra over at Gypsy Fay. I really like how small this one is. So I'm going to give that a good stir and I'm just going to do it by hand. You can see because I've mixed it in with oils, it has mixed into there really nicely without having to actually be stick blended. I'm just going to make sure I've got all of the edges. We'll mix our red in. Right, so I said we were going to do a rainbow soap. What I am going to do with what is left in this yellow, I'm going to pour some into that one and some into there. We'll make sure that we have got the last of that out. Then what I'm going to do is into this one, I'm going to pour some red and I'm going to pour the red into this end one. Get as much of that out as I can. And then into that red one, I'm going to pour some blue and in to my yellow gonna pour just a bit of that blue in there as well now hopefully I was able to find another small one like the one Tierra sent me hopefully when we now start actually mixing these you'll see that we end up with different colors so you can see with that um, by mixing yellow and red together we have got our orange and then let's make sure that's nice and clean off so we don't contaminate it. We've got blue and yellow should make green and this will go with pretty funky colour while it does its thing because that's just what happens with greens and the yellow is going a bit orange as well. So let's get that one all mixed in. See, we've got green, and then this final one, we should hopefully end up with purple. And because I've got more red than I had blue, it will be more on the red side for this purple colour. Alright, so we've got all of those mixed up. I am loving that purple. Let's get that out of the way. Let's move all of this into my big pot. I am going to put some titanium dioxide. We are going to get that mixed in and then we're going to start pouring into our mould. So Viva La Juicy is obviously a fast moving fragrance oil, but I think it is going to be well worth it. If you want to try doing mixing your um, micas like that, I would probably either put your um, fragrance in last or use a very slow moving fragrance. Now I'm going to just put that hanger through very gently like so. Let's get all of that off and then I'm going to scrape out all of my containers. Alright, 
so I have given that a really really good smack down just to try and um, even it out a little bit and hopefully without mushing this up too much I'm just going to put a few little divots in here just to even it out a little bit hopefully not um, messing up those colors too much but it definitely needs just a little bit of work on the top so it doesn't look like I have just dolloped a whole heap of soap on the top here and that is actually coming together well I'm just going to wipe that off so we don't get too muddied in brown in color and give that another wipe off I was a bit concerned at first when I was plopping this on the top. As I said, if you want to have a go at mixing your colours, make sure you are picking a fragrance oil that doesn't accelerate like this one does. I hadn't actually realised. I'm sure I've seen people use Viva La Juicy and it's not accelerated for them. But to be honest, it has been a while since I have been watching any YouTube videos. I've just not had time. So if you know that I am one of your watchers and um, I haven't watched for a while please forgive me I've just been so super busy and then when I get home I kind of just crash and I don't want to do anything more and I just sit on the sofa and I talk with hubby so I haven't actually had time to watch we've also got family over here from the UK so spending time with them as well and I figured over Christmas I can do a whole heap of binge watching and catch up on everyone's um channels so I'm not going to put that back in there because that's just all muddied and brown but that is the top so far now I really can't stop at that I'm going to have to put some blizzard micro on it just to give it a bit of shine and a bit of lift hopefully as this saponifies things like that um, green and the yellow will actually brighten back up to a nice bright green and a bright yellow so we'll give that a really good spritz with some of the blizzard mica to add that shine and then just for some added extra I have got my biodegradable glitter and I'm just going to give that a really really good pump I'm actually looking for some spice glasses to put this in because I think it might be a bit easier to um, get out for me I do love these um, sprayers but after a while they really do start to hurt my hands but I am loving how that is coming together so far let me bring that up so you can have a close so look there so that is the top of Viva La Juicy and as I said hopefully those colors will brighten up we'll leave this one sit here overnight and then we will come back and we'll cut it and we'll see what our rainbow looks like on the inside all right so we are now ready to cut into our rainbow soap and you can see all of those colors have really brightened up that yellow has come nice and bright so has the green as well and the camera makes the purple look a little bit darker but it does have that really bright red tinge to it as well i'm really pleased with how the top of it looks let's cut it open and see what we've got on the inside here so it's lining up on the soap cutter and we are going to go through so off we go it's nice and soft as well so it's cutting it nice and evenly whoop catch the end and let's take a look all right so let's take a look inside and hopefully we haven't got a big muddied mess and that is the inside of our Viva La Juicy. And you can see we have got all of the colors of the rainbow in there. And that was just using those three micas. I am loving these wispy swirls that have gone through. I was, to be honest, very, very concerned what the inside was going to look like on this one. Because that soap batter had got so thick on me. And it was basically getting plopped into the, um, into the mold. I then double sort of guess myself whether to put the hanger through it whether it would just muddy it but I'm so pleased I did because it has created some of the most gorgeous swirls through there now I've just noticed you can probably see my hand shaking I've been to the gym this morning I did a double class and um, two brand new classes for me and it's absolutely killed me that great big blob of blue in there 
So yeah, I'm shaking a little bit because we really did work out very hard and the first class there was only two of us, the second class there was just me, so yeah, I got a little bit punished in that second class, but it was well worth it. Anyway, back to the soap, I am loving those colours. So if you are one of these people who are just starting out and you're looking at your colours, if you can afford it, try and buy one of each of the rainbow colours. If you can't, buy your three primary colours, so you're a nice blue, yellow and a red. And make sure it is a nice red. That really red um, from Nurture Soap is probably one of the better ones for trying to mix your colours together. Um, and the other two I would actually also suggest buying would be some titanium dioxide and I would probably go for either a black oxide or your activated charcoal and by having those um, that white and that black you're going to be able to create lighter and darker shades of each of these colors as well just because I can let's put these two together I don't try to create butterfly soaps um, but this one actually has come up quite pretty and does form a, a kind of butterfly in there. So I'm really, really, really pleased with how this has come together and how all those colours have come together as well. I hope you have enjoyed watching how we've made a rainbow soap just using those three micas. If you did, why not leave me um, a thumbs up and any comments down below. If you've got any questions or suggestions for soaps, also leave them down and below and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And until the next soapy video, I hope you have a great week and I will see you then. Bye.